Against her better judgment, my wife is letting me use the basement for doing this dying operation, so if any mishaps occur, you may not see me for a while. Hello and welcome back to the Way to Native Chronicles. In this video, I'm going to show you how to die traps. I have a bunch of them here for you. And if you like this video and appreciate the content, then be sure to click subscribe to this channel and smash that like button too while you're at it. Because that lets YouTube know that this is the kind of content that they should show more of. Dipping or otherwise preserving your traps with a coating is something that trappers do in order to prevent their traps from rusting. It also makes them harder to see. In addition, in the case of beaver traps, it can prevent rust from being deposited from the jaws of the traps onto the fur of the animals that you're trapping and reducing their value. There are many solutions that people can use for dipping traps. Many of them are petroleum based. The solution that I'm going to use is a Formula One, it's called, and it is a water-based dye that makes it quite easy to use, and especially in these indoor surroundings, very safe to use. So that's what we're going to show you for today. A can like this costs about $30 Canadian. You add two parts of water to use it. I only have one can, but since I'm using a shallow basin, and won't be doing a whole lot of traps, I think it'll be sufficient. You may want to purchase at least two or three when you're doing a larger quantity. When you're finished your dipping operation, you can keep the leftover dye for use next time. Just store it someplace, it won't freeze. Make sure that you follow the simple directions that are on that can. It's quite easy to do. You mix two parts of water with one part of the of the dye. It's a good idea to have your traps clean first. You can clean them off in a power washer for instance. Just get the dirt and grime off it. If the traps have a little bit of rust on it, that's a good thing because uh, it helps the dye stick to the trap surface. If there's excessive deep rust, then you might want to take a wire brush to the traps first before doing this and get that off of there. The first time you dye a new trap, you're probably going to have to dip it about two or three times, probably three times, to get a good coating on it. And that's assuming that you are using a proper mixture of the dye. Don't add more water than what it says to you. After you dyed them well for the first time, subsequent operations, you probably only need to dip it uh, into the dye once in order to just freshen it up. Because this coating does wear off over time. So about once a year. If you dye the traps at room temperature, then it should be okay to dip them again in about an hour from the time you first dip them. You may want to use a fan blowing against them to help speed up the drying process. Once the dipping operation is completed, you should be able to use your traps right away, well not right away, but within 24 hours after having finished your dipping. That's one of the advantages of Formula One. It doesn't leave a bunch of scent residue behind, so it's good for deploying to the field in about 24 hours. So now that we have this introductory information out of the way, let's take a look at what kind of tools and preparation you need to have in place before you start this operation. Let's take a couple of minutes to survey what you need in the way of equipment to, to do this task. I'm going to start by showing the kind of the tub that you'd want to use. In the case of this dipping operation, I'm going to be dipping traps as large as the 330 conibears. So I've chosen a tub that's able to fit uh, an entire 330 in it flat like that. Right. And I'm using a shallow tub like that because I don't have a whole lot of Formula One and uh, you mix it with two parts water for that one part that's in the, 
in the can there, so it's not going to be very deep. Now, in case I can't totally submerge the uh, big traps, I've got a, a paintbrush with me. I can maybe spruce that over a little bit with a paintbrush. But uh, I'm just doing a few traps here, so I'm hoping that this one can, the Formula One, is going to do the trick. Uh, in addition to the tub, I've got a stirring stick, and I've got also a little wire hook that I can use to fish out the traps. When I take the traps out, I'm going to use the lid of that tub to lay the traps in initially until all the uh, dye has drained off them. That way, I can, uh, when I move the traps from the lid onto the cardboard, then they'll be more or less drip dry by that time, and the dye will accumulate on that lid, and I can take that lid later on and pour the excess back into the tub. Formula One is not cheap, so I don't want to waste any of it. Okay, so what else should we mention? Well, the cardboard laid down. I'm going to change some into some shoes that are not my uh, nice moccasins my wife made for me in case something happens there. <laughs> got another piece of cardboard over there, so I've got sufficient layout space, I think, to dip the traps, lay them here for a bit, and then move them over to there and collect them there. Because what I've got is these conibears, a few smaller conibears, and a leg hold, and a bunch of snares that are going to go in here. So that should be sufficient. Now when I'm mixing the Formula One, I'm going to need some sort of prying device like that screwdriver there to pry off the lid. And when I put the lid back on, it's nice to have a mallet and a flat piece of wood to lay on top of the can and you can pound it on nice and tight again. Uh, for getting the water, I'm going to use the can itself, uh, Formula One, as a measuring device. So when I dip the dye into the tub initially and empty it in there, then I can dip it straight into this pail of water here to get two parts of water for every one part of Formula One. So that's basically the plan here. And uh, did I miss anything? Well, rubber gloves are not a bad idea either. And I think that covers it all. So without further ado, let's get started on this. I've got this lid loosened and I just want to show you that uh, when you get this stuff it tends to have a little skim on, uh, skin on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that skin off and it should just tear off like that and we're going to have to throw that away somewhere. I guess I should have had a waste paper basket or something. But I guess that's just from it sitting around for a long time. Okay. Let's see. I got a waste paper basket over here. Okay. Now we got that stuff out of there. And I'm going to pour it into, the, into our tub. Look at that stuff, eh? Oh. Seems to have separated a little bit as it sat for a while. But uh, I'm going to mix it with water and get it all stirred up. Should be fine. Okay. So that's what we have there. So now I'm going to take this can and I'm going to fill it up. Want two parts water for every one part of this dye. So there is one. The second can I'm only going to put in three quarters because I want to slosh out a little bit of the dye on the third pour. There I got three quarters about. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of water to this guy here and I'm going to get my lid and I'm going to pop it 
back on here. I think I'll want to tap this down a little bit. Make sure it's sealed good. Let's see, wipe my hands a little bit. Let's Make sure it's sealed good. And then we can slush it around. Get all that dye out of there, as much as we can anyways. You can see that the tub is not filled that deep. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's get this, this off of there. good stuff in there. Okay, next thing we gotta do is gotta stir this up a bit. This can has been sitting for quite a while. So some of the ingredients in it definitely separated. So I want to make sure that I get this all dissolved into the water solution. Before we start, you can see with just one can, you're not getting a whole lot. So as I was saying earlier on, you might want to buy two or three cans, but I'm just doing a few, few traps, so I'm thinking maybe I can get away with this. We'll find out. Okay, are we getting that? Good solution there. Let's see. See if we get any sludge on the stick. Looks like she's dissolved in there pretty good. Okay, I think we're ready to do some dipping here. Let's see how this goes, boys. over here try to keep it from making too much of a mess yeah let's get our little dipping stick here put these guys in here now I'm gonna have to kind of slosh around a little bit you can see there eh? that's why I thought I might need to bring a brush Okay, let's just flip this guy over. Put that side in there. I think it's, it may need a little bit of brushwork to get it right over top of those springs there and right into the jaws. Yeah, it's getting there pretty good. Let's see, I should be able to. <laughs> Let's just flip her over once more. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to touch it up a bit here. There we go. That's good. Use it to splash it around a little bit. Now, as I was saying earlier, too, the, uh, you can need more, more than one coat on this. So, Rome doesn't have to be built in a day. Let's get this right inside there. Okay, I think we're getting there. And... Here, I'm going to give her one more flip. Let's make sure this thing is coated good. Let's get 
there. Not perfect yet, but it will get there. Okay. Once I get this coated once, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to lay it on that tub lid. That's getting pretty good, I think. Okay. Okay, let's just let's lay this guy on the lid here. Let it drain for a little while first. Got a big bubble there. <laughs> Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, on to the lid with you. On to the next guy. There, the first dipping is complete. Snare wires and traps. Still enough solution to do all these traps I'm sure and one little tip I'll give you is when you're dipping these uh, large 330s even though you don't have much just drag the 330 right to the edge of your basin and then you, where you can get the maximum depth, depth and then you can tip it way up and cover then drag it to the other end and tip it to that end you might want to do that on all four sides you still will have to take a little paintbrush, I think, and paint the coils in the center because it's hard to get them in the middle up to a depth in the solution. One well, of those cans is, is sufficient. Now we're on to the second dip pretty soon. Give it about an hour to dry. Well, I've put the lid back on this tub and it's now sealed good enough so that I can take this container and I can store it somewhere where it won't spill and where it won't freeze and I can use this again if I need to refresh the dip on these traps or if I buy some new traps I can just take the lid off and start dipping them again. It's a bit of an advantage over the petroleum based products that where the petroleum will evaporate off and you're left with nothing. So that's a a good thing about Formula One. Another thing is that it comes off your hands pretty easily. You saw how dirty my hands were getting in the video. I let the stuff dry on my hands for over an hour and uh, went up to the sink and washed them just in water and the stuff came off. So that's that's quite handy. So now that we've done that, I've got my three dips done, I'd like to give you a, a quick look at what the finished product is. Actually I'm quite impressed, especially with the fact that even the traps that didn't have a just like coating the rust, they die just perfectly. So, take a look at that next. So, here are the traps. Now, I hope I got the good lighting for it. Because, as you can see, I think, that's a very flat black. There's no, no glimpses of bare metal or anything in it. Uh, these 330 bears, they came along really nice, I think. That is three dips, and as I was saying before, not all of them even had any rust on them. Two of them did, one of them didn't. The, the one that didn't, I just had bought it and hit it with a power wash at the car wash, and that's about it. So it just got the grease off it. You don't want to have grease on these things before you dip them. Other traps I've got here, these smaller corner bears, that of course all work good too. And got this foothold here. It's, everything turned out really nice. You see that? Very nice. Now the only thing that I would maybe suggest is you might want to touch up the dogs and the triggers a little bit just in case the sears don't slide quite as well with this coating on there. So you might want to file that a little bit but aside from that I think we're 
basically done. I even did the snares here. That was just with two dips on the snares. And I think we've got a pretty good result here. Okay, so that's about it. I've finished off these traps now. Got a good result. And my wife didn't even kick me out of the house. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you have, I encourage you to click subscribe to this channel. We've got lots of stuff here. Hunting, reloading, trapping, leatherworking, bullet casting, the works. So we try to focus on things that are useful to you. If you see something you want to see talked about, let me know in the comments, okay? So that all said, God bless from the Way to Native Chronicles, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Cheers. Okay.